So be before I start, I'm, I'm just a little curious. Um, how many of you here practice architecture or interior design? Can I have a show of hands? Lovely. How many of you that put up your hands actually use an architectural, an independent architectural lighting designer? Come on, somebody, somebody, come on. No? Okay. So, what we're going to be talking about is the role of a lighting designer in the process of design in the built environment. And 20 years ago, when I first spoke about this, the response was pretty much the same. Something has to change. And until we understand what it is that we are changing, we are not really going to be able to make that transition. So, are these... Can you hear me now? Okay. My name is Linus Lopez, and I'm a lighting designer and a forever disciple of the power of light. I'm an electrical engineer and a lighting designer, a professional member of the International Association of Lighting Designers, and together with my brother and partner, Lyle, we run a little practice in Delhi, doing projects almost in every state of India, but also a few countries abroad. Along with 14 other colleagues that all have and share the same passion. But if I was asked as a child, what would I be? Among the many befuddled answers that I might have had, I know that lighting design was not one of them. But yet today, I stand here before you to talk about the role that we, the community of lighting designers in India, play in this important process of taking an architectural space and adding layers of light that enhance without subtracting, but also soothe without being boring. Bear with me when I take you through this journey of passion, which began as my working life did as an engineer, as an electrical consultant, where I was fortunate to work on a number of amazing projects and deploy some interesting technologies, but also learn a lot about the construction industry and the way it is organized in India, with some invaluable lessons on the process of design. But that was until our paths crossed with this gentleman. So uh, we were lucky to win this commission to light Picasso's paintings in Mumbai and uh, Delhi in late 99. And to be honest, it was more because of a technical understanding of the degenerative qualities of the ubiquitous low voltage light of that time. But having first experienced that intersection of light and art, we were forever smitten. Each new exhibition, installation, or art gallery was a thoroughly enjoyable series of experiments with light and shadow. And dealing with the challenges within the tragically short life of that low voltage halogen lamp taught us a lot. This extended into learning about what was at that time new technologies, LEDs. But always being amazed with the emotion that light brought to art in its variety of forms and shapes and mixed media. It was then that we were encouraged by friends in the architectural community to extend that learning into the built environment to reveal form, to reveal material, and to build on the vocabulary of layering with light. But an insightful byproduct of this communication with artists was also learning valuable lessons about perception psychology. And this is something that all lighting designers use subconsciously. What do we see? 
what does it do to make us think? How does it affect us? How is it different from what somebody else is seeing? Use light to create and shape spaces, enliven them, make them memorable. We are also extremely lucky to interact with some thinking architects, some of whom I'm happy to see in the audience today, who encouraged us to push the boundaries a little bit more. And of course, we made mistakes. But along the way, we learned a lot, and the encouragement continued. It never stopped. Until we got the courage to then carry out this lighting journey into the outdoors. Yes, it is a completely different set of rules, but with equally stunning opportunities of expression. Those wonderful years have passed by in a blur of new beginnings. And I didn't really have time to think about what I was doing until we got lucky to work on a project in Varanasi. And while researching for context in this beautiful space, I had the opportunity to learn about one of the oldest documented texts ever written, the Rig Veda. And in the Rig Veda, in the very first book, in the very first verse, they talk about light. And when you extend this study to other scripts in, religious, in the religious context, no matter how agnostic you are, you are always struck by the fact that light played such an important role in the consciousness of the people so long ago. But yet, lighting design is such a relatively new field in a space where we are supposed to be designing for people. So, what exactly does an independent architectural lighting designer do? <laughs> there are a lot of misconceptions and I believe some of them have been cleared by the brilliant presentations of Amar and Manav just before me. But I would like to attempt to define the role that we play in the design process of both interior and exterior spaces by, answer, by asking and answering, hopefully, the three key questions. What do lighting designers do? How do they do it? And most importantly, why do they keep toiling on? I think this is something that we can all easily agree on. Light must illuminate. But is that all? Good designers use light to reveal and conceal, but also to mystify when called upon to do so. But what if I told you that that was not all that light could do? We attempt to define in the beginning of a project what we would like light to do for that project, for the people that inhabit that space, for the people that might not inhabit the space but will still experience it in some form or the other. Light has this unique ability to change the way we perceive a finished three-dimensional space. But you know, wait a minute, these are just words. Let me illustrate this. For a project that we did, the client wanted to open way before we were ready. So he called in the local tent wala and said, can you help me to light this because Linus is not ready. This was a facade which captured the different architectural forms from different parts of India. And when the lights came on, people said, wow. But what we chose to do with a series of experiments, with a series of contextual thought, was to understand how the architecture spoke to people and through a series of mock-ups, see how light interacted with those various forms that were being created. What was the right color? What was the right beam angle? What do you talk about when you play with color as a foreground and a background? What is it that you do to compose your final picture, to put together these elements and then place them in the conscience of the people that experience that space? That is what lighting designers do. How do we do it? Sorry, I must end this with a quote from one of the leading lighting designers in the world 
light must be interpreted into the space so that the inhabitant can experience a positive emotional response. It does not have to be a lot of light. It can actually be very little light creating and causing that emotional response. So how do lighting designers work? There are various stages in the project and we've had a long discussion this morning about how to control those various stages. We should be involved in that process as early as possible from the early conceptual stages through the process of design development, through the final execution to the final commissioning. Because design today is a collaborative process that has devolved from a system of different people working in silos. Integrate the lighting designer in the process of the project as early as possible because it will transform from being passively involved as a listener in the concept stage to a doer in the execution stage. Because a lighting designer at the end of the day is a number of things like most designers are. Starting from being that artist and technologist as Amar and Manav just described, to also being an accountant and an analyst, to worry about the environment, to take concerns that are very real today and apply them to that design. And sometimes when I look at the fees we get, I think we are also magicians in the game. But most of all, your lighting designer is your friend in that design process. There are these stages at which the classic project goes through and the tangible benefits of involvement of that lighting designer change and slowly diminish over the duration of the project. If they were such a thing, past the execution stage, it's too late. But there is this sweet spot right at the conceptual stage where you are actually benefiting from the involvement of a lighting designer. The only point where it might depart from this classic curve is in the role that the lighting designer plays in a conservation of a heritage project, where you could come in, where you necessarily have to come in after the project is completed, but yet make a difference to the way the space is perceived by the people. If you are getting involved at the beginning of the project, especially if it is something as complex as the projects of today, some of which involve the use of, of concrete, a fixed and final hard material, but you work with a brilliant team of architects and you plan your lighting well in advance, you can create some magnificent experiences that use light to even either bring out or challenge the choice of material and design. And finally, why does this community keep lighting? Because besides the many things that we have found light can do, we have seen it perform, we can see it sculpt places, we can see it being used as a tool of communication, of generating comfort and creation. So I would like to hand over the stage now to this young and enthusiastic bunch of lighting designers spread over the length and breadth of the country, a growing community that needs your support. Meet these creators who tell stories in the heritage properties in Rajasthan to venerating our religious heritage in the south. Projects within India that are gaining recognition at a global level, extending the architectural narrative of our cities into our nightscapes at a variety of scales, integrating the ethos of culture with architectural form, while also expanding the concept of comfort in hospitality. From creating vistas that are appealing and memorable to creating new experiences within residences that integrate the indoor 
and the outdoor spaces at a human scale. Who said that commercial spaces are boring? Or that common areas in multi-dwelling residences should be merely functional? From dynamic facades that communicate to people outside to creating a new lexicon for offices and their spaces inside. To finally working with nature to create better environments. Let's talk. Meet the creative independent lighting designers sitting alongside you. And I would encourage all the lighting designers in the audience to please stand up and show yourselves to the community of designers that we now intend to talk to. Thank you.